We're back here at Wanamaker's Tulsa Arms Show. I'm here with Jim Sapika, director of the NRA Museums. And Jim, when you said come on out here and do Curator's Corners at Tulsa, I was glad to do it, but man, already, we've, we're only scratching the surface here. We've got our first four or five under, and we have, we're seeing and going to see some spectacular stuff. Kevin Hogan from Rock Island Auctions is back, and okay, I'm just gonna step back and let you guys go, and let's talk about these farms, because these are truly amazing. Kevin, what you've got here is the holy grail of American firearms collecting, and Colt collecting Absolutely. in particular. Two very historic models. The Patterson model is what really launched cold. It was the first uh, uh, effective American repeater, uh, uh, beginning of the famous Colt name, and it was a dismal failure. He went broke making those. But he came back a few years later, a, uh, a, a young captain that served with the Texas Rangers was with the U.S. Mounted Rifles, said that repeating revolver is what we need instead of our single shot that's, pistols. That's right. I want it big, I want it heavy, I want it sturdy, I want it to take a big charge. And Captain Walker and Sam Colt put together the famous Colt Walker. It was the most powerful handgun until the introduction of the 357 Magnum. So powerful the metallurgy wasn't up to it. You find a lot of these with cracked cylinders, but this one sure doesn't have a cracked cylinder. They, they got road hard and put away wet. This is sure. about as pretty a Walker and as pretty a Patterson Colt as I've ever seen. Patterson from where they made them, Patterson, New Jersey, for crying out loud. Tell us about these two guns. Well, it's, it is kind of an unknown thing that Samuel, uh, Samuel Walker did have Patterson Colts, and that's that's how that's how it all came to be. So you know, you this is the very beginning of Colt, and it's it's wonderful Texas history, it's wonderful American history, uh, and and what a pristine example. It's a number five. They call it the uh, holster model or uh, the Texas Patterson. It's the most desirable of the Pattersons, and it's as far as we're concerned, the finest condition one known. Um, we're talking, you know, shell carved ivory grips. It does have an it does have a letter a lever. Excuse me, uh, six silver bands, and and. You know, in guns, it's always antique firearms, condition, condition, condition. This is, uh, this is certainly that. You know, a, a, a brown patina Patterson is an incredibly valuable gun, but to find a Patterson with that much original finish on it, I have never seen one better. Uh, uh, just a spectacular gun. Of course, it's cased with all the accessories. You've got a, a spare cylinder for a quick reload. Uh, the charger is nice. Uh, it, uh, it charges all six chambers with powder simultaneously, which was... Uh, like a speed loader. Uh, yeah, exactly. Your first speed loader. Yeah. You've got your little bullet mold. You've got your, your capper. You've got for your percussion caps. You've got your, uh, your multi-tool. You've got your uh, 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 cleaning rod. Just uh, And uh, look at the condition of everything. everything you know, they, they talk about stuff yeah. getting, you know, cases get swapped and stuff yeah. gets high graded. Yeah. 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 Look at, you look at the condition from the charger to the mold to the, to the gun itself to the actual case. It's, uh, it just makes sense. That's how it's been. This gun was first offered in 1958 for sixteen hundred dollars to put to put it all into perspective oh. sixteen hundred dollars how, how, how has the value done since then has it gone down oh uh, it's <laughs> it's uh, appreciated quite nicely uh we have it estimated at seven to nine hundred thousand dollars uh a fairly conservative in, in our estimation wow. um and, and one of the cool things too that's not often discussed is uh ownership history the pedigree of yeah. it this this yeah. comes out of the william lock collection as does the walker um that they, they were also in the uh, george repair collection so you talk about you know real icons in in the collecting business, and, and both these guns come come from those collections. Now, this Walker here is uh, extremely rare. Um, it, it's a well-known gun. They call it the Thumbprint Walker. It's actually a civilian. Of course, they made a thousand Walkers, issued them in pairs to the Texas Rangers. This is a civilian-run gun. Uh, they say they only made a hundred of them. We feel they made far less than a hundred guns. Um, and and we actually Rock Island Auction made a discovery on this gun. It was always passed as a you know being the thumbprint Walker. And what we've actually found is this is actually a, a condemned military gun. And, and what happened is they they misdrilled the bore on the barrel. And you can see it externally here. Uh, and if we if we were to take the gun apart, the uh, the cylinder is actually stamped with a big C, condemned. Uh, so it's it is a real civilian Walker, one of the as they say a hundred, but. Serial number 1078, if they made 100 of them and they were dipping into the parts barrel at this point, yeah. you know, did yeah. they really yeah. make 100 of yeah. them? Yeah, so, one, uh, of the, one of the last guns made. Why is this called the thumbprint walker? The thumbprint is for the, uh, the thumbprint in, okay. the, uh, okay. in, the, in the frame here. 
Um, and that's that's kind of how it's been passed on for you know the last last half century. Similar to this gun, it comes it was in the William Locke collection, it was in the George Repair collection. So it's a it's a well known commodity in the uh, in the gun collecting community. It's, it's been with some of the best firearms and the best collections. So that's that's what I find interesting too about these about yeah. these guns. There, there's the there's a provenance from the actual period of use, and then there's the provenance of the collections that it's been in, and both affect the credibility and the value uh, of the firearm. What are you estimating that at? This is estimated at five to seven hundred thousand. Um, so it's uh, it, it is what it is. It's you know if if it's a hole filler, it's guys you know for civilian walkers collectors have gone generations and never had the opportunity to own one because they are that rare. So if a guy's looking to fill a hole, if he's a military collector, if he's a cult collector, this is, you know, potentially a once in a lifetime shot. Wow. And if they want to buy them from you and then loan them to the NRA Museum, <laughs> we can you set go. them up at the <laughs> National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia, or the NRA uh, National Sporting Arms Museum in Springfield, Missouri. They are spectacular guns. We got a million and a half dollars easy worth of Colts laying on the table. All right, I'm taking my hand off the table. For yeah. <laughs> so, hey, how can people get more information about Rock Island Auction? Uh, visit our website. That's the most effective way www.rockislandauction.com. We do have an upcoming auction May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, which is uh, these guns will be featured in it as well as the Lepage that we talked about earlier. Anybody uh, can call up and bid on these, right? Absolutely. Cool. All right, Kevin, Jim, thank you for a spectacular edition here from Tulsa of the Curator's Corner. Back with more next week. We'll see you then. Ooh.